issue of uh, coke coming out of uh, these uh, top charge batteries for larger blast furnaces i don't consider there is an issue it is i mean fully uh, satisfying the requirement of blast furnaces but of course if uh, you compare it with stam charging yes stam charging gives us i mean more freedom uh, and uh, flexibility in selection of coal for coal plant so there we can use inferior type of coal even indigenous coal to greater extent and uh, definitely you can say that uh, cost of blend will uh, go down environmentally i can say that uh, most of the part is being covered by this uh, dry quenching and i must say that uh, i think uh, almost everyone is shifting from wet quenching to dry quenching and most of the pollution control boards should these days are not permitting uh, wet, wet quenching unless you have a strong backup of dry quenching uh, dry quenching itself is i mean uh, effectively reduce your co2 exposure because uh, almost 1 ton of coke dry quenched gives us 0.6 tons of steam so you can convert around 7.5 7, 7 to 7.5 megawatt uh, power through that and that is uh, i mean whatever power you use whether imported power or generated uh, indigenously within the plant you are using fossil fuel so that way if you can convert uh, some of the energy through dry quenching it is a, it will have a great impact on reducing the co2 emission in total steam making process so that way i think dry quenching is addressing this issue so as responsible people knowing that we are dealing with coal which in today's narrative is being considered as a polluting uh, or a, a sort of a dangerous uh, a, a, a product which will result in more emissions more uh, environmental disasters we have more of that onerous duty cast on us when we talk about judicious use efficient use of coking coal in the country today we do have reserves of coking coal but we see most of it is imported uh, of the 56 million tons that is being imported i think that goes to produce how much at about 70 million tons uh, 76 70 uh, 70 million tons through the primary route we do produce about 50 million tons of coking coal in the country but unfortunately only 5 million tons of that comes into the steel sector after all the washing etc primary coking coal is also being used by other sectors that is a concern which we have flagged with ministry of coal we know that out of the 300 million tons of trade of coking coal this country is today taking 56 but the country is seeing a lot of expansion in steel at least in the period 25 26 that is definitive expansion when we talk to the large isps everybody has well embarked onto the path of expansion we in the ministry of steel have set a target of uh, 300 million tons till 2030 when i talk to the isps they talk about 300 million tons but they have their definitive plans of expansion at least till 25 26 which are already in operation when i say by operation meaning that they have embarked on construction of new blast furnaces so when we look at that we see that the imports are probably going to go up from the current current 56 more in the range of 65 or maybe even 70 million tons of coking coal on one hand we are talking about co2 decarbonization but on the other hand we have limitations we don't have scrap much available in the country we don't have natural gas available in the country so that we can use dri or ef based this thing and then coal we have but we don't have the coal gasification technology available with us so the use of syn gas also is becoming very very limited because whatever gasification technologies have been developed mainly they can use coal even up to around 25 28% maximum beyond that no gas gasification technology has been developed under these present circumstances we don't have any other option if we want to meet our steel demand up to 2030 which we are expecting because last 4 5 years we are seeing a growth of around 6 to 7% cagr but with this announcement of this gati sakti project infrastructure project we are expecting that cagr will be increased to around 
8 to 9 percent and if we go with 8 to 9 percent it means definitely we will require around 220 to 230 million ton of steel finished steel and for that we require around 255 to 260 crude steel and around 300 million ton. so it is inevitable we have to expand and under these conditions only route available is the bf and bof route when we are going with bf bof route there is a always pressure that we have to minimize our CO2 emissions. Today our CO2 emission is one of the largest, around 2.5 to 2.6 in integrated steel plant. And DRI and other cases it is going around even as high as around 3 to 3.1 also. But average if we see, it is coming around 2.5 2.6. So we have to look other alternatives, whatever is available with us. And one of the most important alternative available is the cocoa one gas. We have to see in our steel plant, can we use this cocoa one gas in a different manner? Can we use, right, go on burning this COG gases or can we find some other alternatives also? Then another thing was about the safety issues. Because in the recent past, some accident has taken place in cocoa one gases like because of carbon monoxide, because of hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is becoming a, another challenging area how to address those issues, how to ensure that those things are not exposed to the atmosphere so that those safety issues can be considered. So these type of, because cocoa one we cannot avoid at this moment. The logistic costs are something which get hidden in the total cost of uh, the, it is not only in coal, even say in products like uh, limestone for instance, the uh, price is around 8 or 10 dollars. Uh, the cost of the material and the logistic cost, the CE logistics is around 20 to 25 dollars. Yeah. And the invert logistics is, of course, anybody's guess is as good as it gets. Railways has got a fixed uh, rate charge. Now, that is uh, the proportion uh, gets hidden when the coal prices go very high. When the coal prices were at a level of 600 dollars, probably it was not uh, so visible, though the freights had gone up slightly. Uh, say uh, Australian freight today is around thirty dollars, or a freight from US would be around say forty dollars today, considering the high uh, freight rates. But uh, the freight uh, or the, the ocean freight being one thing, the invert inland freight is also killing us to a very great extent, and that invariably gets passed on because there is no other means other than rail for us to. So there is a need for uh, having an alternate methods. We were talking about some, uh, there is some talk in the morning about, uh, I think that was Madam's old point of waterways. Even when you were uh, in the industry, you were talking about how waterways could be used for uh, movement of coal. Although coal has got its own problems of being polluting, so it is not very easy. We cannot think of moving such large quantum of coal by road because again, pollution being one and availability of roads and vehicles, both are going to hit us. But uh, depending on rail alone, especially as uh, India would move towards uh, the national steel policy, I think talks about uh, from 80% imported coal to 60%. But uh, as the, uh, we have one more generation to go, where we will probably have to move away from coal. But one generation of expansion, one generation of movement would be dependent on coal based, BF, BOF based predominantly. Expansion would happen. And probably after that, it would uh, go out. But uh, having said that, uh, the uh, unless and until immediately we have some uh, moment of material through alternate routes. So we have uh, in the intermeasure committee report, we have clearly identified the actionable point: one for the coal India and other for the non-coal India players. For the coal India, CMPTI is already working on projectizing those cooking coal blocks and then putting up into the production mode. For the non coal for the non coal India operators, we have identified some of the blocks are under auction. But I understand that about ten blocks uh, we are uh, thinking about um, uh, ask CMPDI to finalize the GR of four more blocks, and those blocks will be under auction. And then uh, for the new uh, for the future area like thirty two thousand square kilometer, the potential coal bearing area which has been identified. So government is now thinking, giving priority to the only coking coal areas which will be explored up to G2 level or G1 level and then it will be auctioned. So there is a priority on coking coal so that coking coal can be produced more. Then coming to the washeries. So also there is a plan, washing which I have mentioned earlier also, 
coal india is also setting up of washeries and then we have also came up with the policy of setting up washeries on bu operators so the land which has been leased to the coal india under cb act can now be given to the private operators also for setting up of washeries so government is supporting those things both the things and then uh, you have a policy of uh, linkage for for 15 years for the coking coal so those things are there i think this will help in uh, availability of domestic coal in the country from cmpdi they are constructing washeries hum log naya bu basis par bomb basis par washery bana rahe hain and even we have come up with a policy that land can be leased to the washery operator now द कोल इंडिया का जो कोल बियरिंग एरिया में जो लैंड एक्वायर किया हुआ है सो आई थिंक दैट देखिए करीब 15 मिलियन टन वॉशरी जो है वो सिक्स न्यू कोकिंग कोल वॉशरीज नाइन न्यू कोकिंग कोल वॉशरीज आने वाली हैं सो so, जैसे ही एक वॉशिंग कैपेसिटी बढ़ेगी डेफिनेटली द वॉश कोकिंग कोल प्रोड्यूस डोमेस्टिकली विल गो द लेटेस्ट डेटा विच आई एम गोइंग टू रिप्रेजेंट हीयर्स बाई टू थाउजेंड थर्टीज विद एक्सपेंसन प्लान विच हैज लेट डाउन we are going to be 175 million tons on the steel capacities which is a practical one and therefore so the import forecast is 90 to 92 million tons on the on the coking coal front similarly on the southeast asia markets we are again so with the 75 million tons 50 million tons is already under the place and by 2020 by 2030 so we will see that the additional 22 million tons which is more kind of a you know excess quantities is going to be imported by the southeast asian market so in overall so the the cooking coal demand till 2030 is we are seeing 35 million ton in whole sum and now so the where is the new assets what is the mining company the big giants mining companies how they are producing how is their production plans how they are going to take up so therefore you know uh, us is also trying to make the canada is also trying to make and you know come into the southeast asian market to improve their quality change in the blend ratios and all so this is on the global steel scenario and therefore yes it is quite important uh, that since we are emerging in a big way and though we are the second largest steel uh, over in the world other than china so we should focus our in house things funds and uh, by what pu sir has told that uh, 15% uptick in the cooking coal productions and if that is summarized we will be at around uh, by 2030 around 60 to 65 million ton and net import on the cooking coal side